Good morning, fellow Plastic Crack followers. Uh, I had been asked to do tutorial on uh, my process for Quick Shade, Army Painter Quick Shade, uh, in the can batch painting here just to get a, a really kind of quality tabletop look uh, with minimal effort. <clears throat> so uh, we'll go ahead and get that together. Uh, first part here is going to be prep uh, everything you would need to get started. So, um, you know, get your base, uh, base primer of choice. Um, doesn't matter if it's Army Painter or uh, GW. Um, you also want to get a can of the Anti-Shine Matte Varnish if you're not doing uh, organics. Um, to give you an idea what I mean by that, so you can get set up, um, you know, this here, this has had the Anti-Shine added to it. Uh, you can see it's just a matte finish, it's protected. This guy here is a step in between, and you'll see he's quite glossy, quite shiny, which uh, that'd be fine, you know, if you had some sort of organic, you know, life form you were painting, painting maybe, you know, Tyranids or shiny metal, something like that. Uh, but I think most people would opt to have the anti-shine put on. You can paint on top of either of them, so that's not really an issue. So again, uh, your base, your varnish, um, you're gonna need some mineral spirits. Um, you can buy it at a hobby shop for more money than you could probably buy it at a, at a super center and, and in greater quantity, so I wouldn't recommend that. Then you're gonna want your um, quick shade can tones. Uh, you got soft tone, strong tone, dark tone. Uh, for most purposes, the soft tone works with uh, lighter colors, uh, whites, yellows, bright greens, bright blues, uh, things like that. The strong tone's more recommended for that, that middle ground and those dark colors. They're both um, a brown tone, whereas the dark tone is more of a black. I have not used the dark tone yet, but most people say it's it's almost it's almost too dark. It, it almost makes things uh, too contrasting. Um, you know, feel free to try it out. Try it for yourself. Um, you know, at the friendly local gaming store, you know, this is going to run around fifteen bucks. This is going to run around eleven dollars. These are about thirty dollars a piece. These do last quite a while. Uh, next thing you're going to want to get <clears throat> are some reusable containers. Make sure the plastic on these reusable, reusable containers is a little bit flexible. Um, I did use some hard plastic containers with this stuff initially, and it uh, it made it brittle. The containers cracked. It let air in. It wasn't a good thing. So these these you should be these were if you're in the states these were picked up from Hobby Lobby. I want to say they were about six bucks for four of them. They they feel great. They feel like they should be usable. So you want to get those um, because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be pulling out of the can uh, and thinning and then putting into these so that you have a little bit more usable of a system. Um, last thing, not necessary, but it might help if you have a, a graduated pipette here to be able to make sure your ratios are pretty good. It's probably unnecessary, but it helps. Um, lastly, <clears throat> For the brush, you want to have a cheap synthetic bristle brush. I mean, when I say cheap, I mean, you know, cheap. Just as long as it's synthetic bristle so they can hold up to the uh, varnish or the polyurethane or whatever is in this stuff that would normally destroy a regular brush. Um, <clears throat> it gets pretty hard after you use it, but you can just dab it in the mineral spirits, make it soft, then dry it off, and it's uh, good to go to use again. So, as far as prep, um, the most common ratio that I've seen used on these, it's what I use, it seems, seems to work pretty well, is three parts of the quick shade to one part of mineral spirits. Um, it will settle, you can see, obviously my ratios got screwed up between those two because I wasn't using a uh, um, measuring uh, device. Um, you can use it right out of the can, but it is quite thick. Um, you would need to do a lot more work with your brush to pull off the excess uh, pooling <clears throat> of the material. 
So if you thin it, it's a little bit more, a little bit more fluid. It'll run a little bit better, get in the cracks, but just kind of um, try it on a couple of different models that you don't really care about at first to come up with the ratio that you like. Um, so that's basically everything you need to get started on this. And then uh, from here on, we'll go into the next steps. Okay, <clears throat> so now we're on to the first and second part of this. Um, real quick, if you are using the Army Painter sprays um, and the matte varnish, there's something worth making note of here. Um, even though they're from the same company, since they are different products, uh, they have different distances at which you would need to use them. And I think that's part of some of the problems that people complain about with the matte spray as far as getting the hazy, misty-like look on it. Uh, <clears throat> besides your ambient temperature, humidity, all that other jazz, the Army Painter Primer, surprisingly, you gotta hold it fairly close. So you gotta hold it about uh, six inches away from the model. If you don't, uh, the model will have a, a very grainy finish to it. But the anti-matte varnish, you need to hold more like 13, 14 inches away and do a real light dusting, two light coats on it, you should be fine. I believe in their book, they even say three light coats. So. I guess uh, less is more with that, but they do have different distances. The primer being about six inches and the uh, anti-matte varnish about uh, double that. So <clears throat> on to the next, just primer your model up, you know, whole thing, single color, you know, pretty simple here. Then once you have that primed, <clears throat> add your base colors. So this was just the base here, and then you've got uh, bronze, a one color of bronze. You've got um, two different base colors of pink on the tentacles just to make it a little bit different. You know, the same color gunmetal on both the detail on the backpack and the uh, muzzle, the magazine, um, a different color on the uh, bolter casing to make it stand out. Um, now, one thing I did do that was an extra step, but it doesn't take much, is I used the same color bone on both the spikes and the uh, hooves here. <clears throat> and then I just put a real quick uh, Seraphim sepia wash on it just to different, differentiate the two. The nice thing is it's gonna look totally different uh, with the quick shade on it, and you know, really you only used one color paint and the, the wash is really quickly. So if you've got things that you can wash just to make a, a different color um, you can and then you'll have a, a different effect uh, when you do the quick shade so pretty much this is done we're not going to do anything else to this other than um, doing the quick shade next which um, will be in the next portion all right now we're on to the uh, third part of this which is the application of the quick shade um, one thing i forgot to mention is I'm not a particularly fast painter, so um, your results may vary uh, from primer to getting all these base coats on. Uh, it took me about two hours. So considering I can go from two hours to putting this stuff on and then pretty much being done, um, that's pretty good for me. You might have a way to do it faster, um, but I think this technique is great for uh, beginning painters. Uh, really even uh, uh, intermediate painters. Obviously, if you're above that skill level, uh, this probably isn't for you and you're probably not watching this anyway. Um, so we have our mineral spirits uh, for cleanup. We have our um, three to one mixed quick shade here out of a small pot, so it's easy to use. I have my synthetic brush that I wet in advance with some mineral spirits to break up the bristles a little bit. Um, just make sure that it's, it's out there, um, off of it. And then, um, we'll start putting this stuff on and you'll see just kind of how quick and how sloppy it is. And you're going to watch me doing it and you're going to think, good Lord, what has he done? Um, it's going to look like trash. Um, but you just wait 24 hours afterwards and it looks fantastic. So this is the, uh, strong tone, I believe, hopefully, um, yeah, that looks darker than this. I label the boxes, they're pretty close, um, or label your cans. They're pretty close when they're just sitting there. When they're on the model, they look totally different, and I'll show you a comparison later, 
but just in the tubs like that, they can actually look uh, very close. So I'm gonna move the camera here, um, and let's see. We'll show you just kinda how we slap it on. So. When you dip it in there, you'll notice the synthetic bristles just really um, soak it up. I wouldn't even try and get any excess off of it. Just let it all on the brush so it's gonna be all thick and crazy like that. And just start from the highest point. Oh yeah, this is the dark. And just start slathering it on. I mean, really drenching it. Also while I'm doing this, I highly recommend the Citadel uh, paint handle or something similar to it because when this stuff starts to drip down and get on your hands uh, it is terrible so um, that'll just help you uh, deal with that so <clears throat> like I said I'm not really being too particularly careful about how I apply this I'm going heavier on it as opposed to lighter it's gonna run and fill recesses, which is fine. So you gotta do this a little quick. It'll start to it'll start to dry fast. And when it dries too much, you lose the ability to um, pull some of it off, um, rearrange it. All right. So pretty much I'm covered. Let's make sure I didn't miss anything on the back there. All right. Now. Once you've covered and you've soaked the whole thing, now what you're gonna do, you're gonna dry off the brush and you're gonna start using it to pick up where you have too much. <clears throat> and you're just gonna do that by just dabbing the dry brush right where you've got a little bit too much. And you'll see it just, it does a great job of pulling it out. That's definitely something you want to do. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> make sure you don't have any bubbles. Um, you can use these to tap on the bubbles. If there's a nice good shadow in a, in a recess and you want to leave it there, that's fine. Um, now what you'll also find too is this stuff kind of perpetually runs until it hardens up. So you may have removed some excess pooling from one area and you might think you're good, and then um, you come back and you notice it's actually filled up again. So uh, definitely give it a twice over. Yeah, you'll see we had already done that uh, that tabard, and it's uh, it's pooled back up again. And this stuff's already run down onto my fingers, and it's already sticky. So. Yeah, I could only imagine what it would be like if I didn't have this paint handle. Um, yeah, the magazine right there. <clears throat> In hindsight, flat brush like this, probably not the best thing to use. Pointed brush might be a little bit better because it would help you pull some of the shade out of these areas with a bit more precision. Um, right now, I can only do a, a flat dab and that's about it. So, okay, maybe up here, it's starting to, starting to dry. You can see I kind of made a mistake right there on the top. So we're probably going to leave it. You see there's some excess pooling back here, I'm right there. But you can already see how it's really defining the panels of the armor. Let's see, a little excess right there. Skull's looking good. There, there was some excess there. So looking, looking pretty good. Pull that out. So everybody says uh, it's the same thing as, you know, Nuln Oil or Agrex Earthshade. It is absolutely not. It is not the same thing. 
It's closer to a, a furniture polish um, or furniture stain with polyurethane. So it's it's thick. Um, it's going to add a layer of protection to it. So it really helps, you know, if you're d dropping models. I don't have any uh, pewter minis that I haven't painted, but I would absolutely love to have done this on a pewter mini because I hate how the uh, uh, paint chips off so easily if you don't spray a varnish on it. So this kind of takes care of that and gives you a special effect. So we're pretty much good. Um, you can already see... Uh, let's get a little bit out of there. Oh, a little bit too much in there. That's where that pointed brush would have come in handy, though. Then eventually, you have to stop because it's going to start hardening up on you and you're going to start getting weird effects. So I'm going to stop. Pretty good with it. But you can see, um, compared to how it looked when we started, it's quite a bit different. You get all that uh, definition in it. You know, skulls popping out. You got, you know, a couple of different layers of shading on the uh, cord that's around the uh, bolter right there. So now we're going to leave this up for about 24 hours. So don't touch it. You don't need to put it under heat. You don't need to put it um, in front of a fan or anything. Just just leave it as it is. Um, you're probably going to have some excess runoff on it. Um, and like I said, this stuff is this stuff's pretty nasty. So we'll take it out. Just set it down. Then clean it off of the paint handle here just so it doesn't dry up so so that's it I mean you saw how quick that went on um, if you did something you know it, really simple like you're doing your line troops and they didn't have you know quite as <clears throat> many details as these guys do because let's face it you know these new death guard um, you know, they're quite nice models, but you can really just, just burn through this stuff fast. So we'll let this dry, and then we'll come back with after the application of the anti-shine matte varnish, and then you can see the uh, uh, finished project. All right, thanks. All right, so now we're getting close to the final portion of this and being done. Uh, this is what it looks like after sitting for... 24 hours so it's hardened up it's good you can touch it no problems you can see it it really really just brought out the detail in this and just made it pop and what's great about it is that it did that job on just a single color so you know really as far as taking your extra time and uh, you know shading all the recesses and then recovering them and uh, bringing them back and then doing highlights you can really save yourself a lot of time if you're just doing a uh, line troops uh, by using this method. So as you can see, this has not had the uh, anti-shine matte varnish put on it, so it is quite glossy. Um, you might like that. You might just want to leave it like this and, and rock with it, and that's absolutely fine. Or you might want to uh, tone down that shine a little bit since it's not a, a slimy creature per se or uh, with a shiny carapace. Now you will see here, that real thick shadow so that was an error on my part I let uh, too much uh, material pool up there so like I said it, it is helpful to have a pointed brush instead of a flat brush because I probably could have pulled most of that out and uh, uh, kept at it but hey you know um, for the little work that I put into it it looks pretty good so we'll take a break right here and I will go spray it with the anti shine and come back and then we'll finish this all up all right, so here is the uh, final look here. You'll see that the glossiness, that shine that was on there, it's all gone. Um, it's just got a nice kind of subdued effect. Um, but there's some really, really great detail. And the detail, the detail is sharp. So that, that's what's nice about it is, is you put this stuff on and it does so much of the work for you um, I, I really can't rave enough about it so 
you're going to see some of my imperfections. So that line right there, that's uh, uh, cleaning it after uh, it had started to dry. You know, I told you right there in the uh, tabard, there was a pooling up of it. So it takes some time to get the application of it perfect. Um, but these are, let's face it, you're probably using this technique on purely line troops. So, you know, really it's, it's not that big of a deal because if you spend more time on your characters, they're going to stand out more anyway. Um, now on the <clears throat> anti-shine varnish, it, in addition to doing it further away than the primer, you know, uh, around that 13, 13 inches or so, 12 inches, um, you got to do it in very, very light applications. So just maybe three, four passes. And if you didn't get all of it and you can still see shiny parts on it, that's fine. Just set it aside, let that dry for about 10, 15 minutes before you come back, do a couple uh, more light passes. Um, two times, you should be able to pretty much get everything. But what I have a, a bad habit of doing is when I'm on the second time, I really want to get it done and I'll, I'll see a place that I missed the first time and I'll want to try and go back over too aggressively. And then I will get, you can see a little bit of the, uh, I'm not going to call it f flecking, but you can kind of see it on the bolter casing below the charging handle right there. It's minimal and I'm being kind of annoying about it. But if you did three really light passes, um, it would look absolutely perfect. And the spray itself uh, lasts a really long time. I've done the entire... Um, well, I won't say I've done the entire. I've done 20 pox walkers and uh, eight plague marines and one uh, intercessor with the same can, and it still feels like it's about halfway full. So for $10, it's really a great deal. Um, like I said, if you, if you wanted to, you could paint on top of this if you did want to do some highlights. So you could absolutely use this technique with a character and then uh, block it all in with the uh, shade and the varnish and then paint on top of it and then it would protect it while you're you know rolling it around and doing things like that it protect it from chipping um so that's great but you know I, I i wouldn't have been able to draw those lines that precisely if i was doing you know a a wash and then a dry brush on top of that it just it just wouldn't look that good so it definitely helps those out with less than uh heavy metal you know quality painting skills a um, couple of other things, just tidbits of info, info before I let you go, um, just for comparison purposes. Again, this is this particular model is used with the strong tone. Um, you can see it has a, a pretty deep feeling, a pretty heavily contrasted feeling. And then for comparison purposes, this was built up going the exact same way, but the soft tone was used on it. Um, you can kind of see it's 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 quite a different appearance um, than the strong tone, where you really can see it. And I'll try and get both of these in the view uh, with one hand here. Is in the packs, so you can see the backpack was heavily shaded than the other. Uh, one last bit here before I let you go. You can put transfers on, and then you can quick shade over the transfer, locking it in. And then when you would do anti shine over the whole thing, it would make everything appear a uniform texture. So it's probably really good for that. I hope this helped you, and I hope you decide to uh, experiment with Quickshade. Thanks a bunch.